Good morning. My name is Marion Benz. Welcome to Worship with St. Matthew's Church.
to our worship service for this weekend as we enter the time after Pentecost. It's not ordinary time, uh, as we might normally be accustomed to, but we do begin uh, this time after Pentecost with stories of Jesus beginning uh, the mission and ministry of his disciples. The very beginnings of God's people Israel wandering through the wilderness and the assurance that even in the beginning, uh, the presence of Christ's forgiveness accompanies us as we journey off onto new and unexpected places. We also commemorate today, along with our siblings across the ELCA, uh, this week's commemoration of the Emmanuel Nine, uh, newly added to our list of martyrs in the faith, whom we commemorate uh, coming upon the anniversary of their death uh, this coming week. Parts of our service reflect our call as a church across the country uh, to lament uh, racism, to honor their witness and their sharing of the gospel, even with the man who would go on to kill them. Uh, what a sign of powerful love and hospitality uh, that we might desire to emulate in our own lives of faith. With that, uh, we come together in prayer, separate but yet held together in God's Holy Spirit. Welcome to worship. In Jesus' name. The sin of racism hurts communities of color, fractures human relationships, and denies God's good creation. God's grace in Christ frees us for the difficult work of recognizing and lamenting racism. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, Paul reminds us in Romans. We have assigned the notion of race to human beings created in God's own divine image. We have judged God's beautiful diversity by our flawed and artificial standards. We cry out to you, hear, hear us, our lament, O oh God. We have used language and images in ways that equate black and dark with dirt and sin, and that fail to welcome the treasures of darkness in God's good creation. We cry out to you, hear, hear our, our lament, O oh God. We have accepted practices in our churches and in our society that privilege whiteness over diversity and equity. We have been complicit in how racism continues to exclude and harm people of color. We cry out to you. Hear our lament, O oh God. When one part of the body of Christ hurts, the whole body hurts. As we listen to people who are harmed by racism, we call to you, open our hearts, O oh God. As we reflect on our daily interactions with people and communities of color, we call to you, open, open our, our hearts, hearts O oh God. God. As we reconsider what we have been taught about race and racism, we call to you, open, open our, our hearts, O oh God. As we contemplate what we have done and what we have left undone, we call to you, open our hearts, O oh God. As we labor to create a loving and safe community for our siblings of color, we call to you, open our hearts, O oh God. Let us pray. Holy and merciful God, as your people, we recommit ourselves to loving one another as you have loved us. Prepare us for this time of listening and discovery. We pray in the name of the one who has made us one, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
The grace of our Savior, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And let us pray. God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour your love into our hearts, that overflowing with joy, we may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning. A reading from Exodus. The Israelites had journeyed from Rephidim, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came, summoned the elders of the people, and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one, Everything that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. And let us read from Psalm 100 responsively. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God, our maker to whom we belong. We are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. Enter the gates of the Lord with thanksgiving and the courts with praise. Give thanks and bless God's holy name. Good indeed is the Lord, whose steadfast love is everlasting whose faithfulness endures from age to age. Good morning. A reading from Romans chapter 5. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, Rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel for this second Sunday after Pentecost comes from St. Matthew, the ninth and 10th chapters. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion for them 
because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus. Simon, the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. The twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You receive without payment. Give without payment. The gospel of the Lord for you this day. Praise to you. O Christ. Grace and peace to you, my friends, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. My preaching professor, Hank, cautioned us from day one of learning to preach a sermon. If you are reading a Bible passage and start to identify yourself or your audience as being Jesus, or telling them that they are Jesus in the story, you might want to scrap your sermon and start over again. As we hear Matthew's words today, as we encounter the beginnings of Jesus sharing authority and power and sending his disciples out in mission, I'm not too worried that we'll think we're Jesus. But I am not certain we should read this story and see ourselves as the disciples. We are not among the twelve named in the gospel. Yes, I am Matthew, but I am no tax collector. Maybe, just maybe, we aren't the twelve, but are also a part of the stricken crowds on whom Jesus has compassion. At this particular time, in our particular places, we continue to face still the impacts of global pandemic, We're engaging in national conversations about race and violence and and the stewardship of human life. And we find ourselves with increasing isolation, calcifying polarization, and just growing frustration at the nonstop politicizing that we are seeing day to day. We are among the crowds, among the house of Israel, the family of humankind to whom Jesus is commissioning his closest followers. We are the object today of God's good news. The word, the kingdom of God has come near to you and to me. We are not messengers. We are not disciples in this story. My friends, we are the sheep. And I think that is good news in and of itself. Jesus sees the crowds across the Galilee region in their public spaces in their religious gatherings, even in their private homes, all of them spaces under Roman Empire occupation. And what Jesus sees is a need to be present with the crowds, to confront their pain. The people in the crowd who Matthew describes as being harassed, helpless, literally caught in the jaws of a predator, Jesus meets them, and his reaction isn't to fix His reaction to this pain-filled reality brings an ache to his gut. He responds with compassion. I like to imagine Jesus in our own lives, sitting among us in a crowd, a socially distant crowd, but among us, asking you and me for our honest sharing of deep pain that we have known. The fear, the angst, our unmet desires and unfulfilled hopes. I wonder what it is that we would bring to him right now. 
Jesus hears and listens to our laments of racism, of the generational pain passed from parent to child, as we weep with those whose suffering bumps into ours, as we mourn the ways sin has created all the isms that we are seeing unveiled before our own eyes. Jesus' ministry, his commission, the disciples' work too, is to be with those whom the iconic preacher Howard Thurman describes as the disinherited ones, those who are lost because they've been seen as less than human, those also who have, under the power of sin, lost their way, to those whose names have been forgotten and those whose names we never even noticed from the beginning. And my friends, I think it brings us great comfort that Jesus, God in our flesh, begins with compassion, starts his ministry by seeing those whom the political regimes or the economic systems or the honor and shame codes we still know in our bones have meant to be obscured. You see, God gives great freedom when Jesus is moved with compassion for the places in our world that COVID has revealed societal weakness and human brokenness. And Jesus starting with compassion brings me hope, even amidst my whiteness, where past years and past weeks have been a place where God's work convicts and enlightens me both. Even if we might have privilege in the sheepfold, Jesus is moved with compassion at all the ways the sins of superiority diminish the fullness of God's intention for all humanity to thrive. Lutheran pastor and organizer Alexia Salvatierra beautifully writes, the goal of Jesus' ministry, as we see here with the disciples, isn't simply to redistribute power. Jesus also isn't seeking to burn it all down. Jesus desires to transform the way we all interact with each other. It is with Jesus we are freed to seek a new social order, a new way of interacting and responding to wealth and inequality, to racism, to seeing the humanity and respecting the dignity of one another, regardless of our identity markers. And the scripture from Matthew's gospel reminds us, we all shall be changed. This is most certainly true. And it is most certainly good news that Jesus sends his disciples to come to our world in our lostness, to come to the sheep harassed and helpless, those numb with pain or filled with the lifelong impacts of hatred and fear on their physical well-being. To all who are not whole, Jesus and the disciples embody what we call the theology of the cross. They embody the honesty that death is real and life is real or still. They name the ways that we are stuck and moved and stirred to grace and mercy when we see human suffering, when we witness the violence and death of our world, the things we've seen on video from our news feeds again and again. Jesus and the Twelve proclaim the good news that God's reign will not be defined by the constant letdown of humanity, even if we try to create more and more rules and regulations or stricter segregation, or if we have ever-moving moral benchmarks of who really has value. That doesn't stop Jesus and the disciples. They go to the crowds, to the cities, and they begin to cure and heal the disease and sickness those side effects of a visible world that feels too often like it's careening toward chaos and spinning in sin. Dear church, Jesus and his disciples come to the sheep so that the despair would be stopped and to begin to initiate God's good news, the harvest a harvest not of souls, but of justice and peace, mercy and grace. Jesus is reaping every person's full value and potential, their gifts coming to fruition. 
It's almost as if God is saying to the lost sheep, to the disinherited sheep, to the sheep within each of us, you are a part of my creation. You will be people now whose purpose is to bear my creative and redeeming word to all the world. As it says in Matthew 10, 9, my grace was given to you free of charge. And you are going to be dispensing even more free, unconditional, and abiding grace. Especially in the places where the world's cries and laments and aches and helplessness make your gut churn. And so, my friends, Jesus is proclaiming to us, the sheep, the crowds, those at the end of our ropes... You all are gospel-bearing sheep now. It's all you could ever do. It's all you can ever be. Your people made holy through the compassion and the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You, children of God, are sheep transformed by Jesus' mission of mercy and compassion, listening and love. We are transformed by God's grace Turn by Jesus' listening to our pain. And we are repentant as a result of the Spirit's stirring in our hearts so that we might be united in a new way. As bearers of signs of compassionate love, God's compassionate love to the world. We are the sheep to whom God's grace has come. And we are at the same time sheep through whom God's word of enduring hope flows. And through our own lives, broken as they are, we are still called to model Jesus' compassion, his listening presence, as we encounter the truth of our siblings of color. In God's own image, our siblings too. As we hear and share with them, and with each other, signs of a world where God is promised us God's faithfulness for the sake of all creation. I came across a story this past week that lifted up the story of a survivor of great helplessness and harassment, a Dutch woman who survived the Holocaust, who went through Auschwitz alive. As she told her story, she said she did not have great faith but yet, as a survivor, felt called to take responsibility for making God credible in the world, to make God believable. As we bear signs of God's faithfulness, we as sheep are following Jesus our shepherd to go to other places of pain and suffering. Debbie Thomas writes, to make God believable here and now means we might stand in the hot white center of the world's pain, not just glance at the general direction of suffering or injustice, only to sidle away, but to dwell, to identify ourselves more fully, wholly, with those who are weeping and aching and dying. We are freed and invited as the sheep in our story today to follow Jesus not as the elite 12, not as disciples, but as broken yet blessed, lost and still found, sinning and saintly sheep, who can't help but join in bearing a sign of unexpected grace in the world. There's lots of yard signs and signs in our culture right now. What is the sign of God's faithfulness you are proclaiming to the world? Maybe your sign reads Black Lives Matter, justice for all. Maybe it's a sign that might read, the reign of God is coming near. My sign, I think, would read like this. God is calling us to a new understanding of our humanity, our value, and our lives, both in the sight of God, but especially in the sight of one another. It's my hope and prayer that we, mirror, reflect, bear the sign of compassion toward all we meet, weak, strong, disciples, sheep, you and me. 
Thanks be to God. Amen. join together in professing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Holy One, you bring us together and call us your own. Bless theologians, teachers, and preachers who help us grow in faith. Guide your church that we, we might be a holy people. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, the whole earth is yours. Where there is fire, bring cool air and new growth. Where there is flooding, bring abatement. Where there is drought, bring rain. Inspire us to care for what you have provided. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, we have created divisions you will not own. In places of conflict, Raise up leaders who work to develop lasting peace and reconciliation. Encourage organizations and individuals who care for all forced to leave their homes. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, you care for those who are harassed and helpless. Protect and defend those who are abused. Heal those who are sick. Feed all who hunger, empower all whose voices go unheard, and help us respond to the pressing needs of our neighbors. We pray especially today for Joanne's sister, Patty, in hospice care. Grant both of them peace, O oh God. We pray for Beth as she recovers from surgery, for Tom, hospitalized after a fall and for our partner churches, Reformation and Cross. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, you provide a plentiful harvest of gifts and resources. Prepare us to labor and gather the fruits of this congregation that we might discover new ways of living. 
minister to us in our work, that we do not lose heart. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, you bring all people to yourself. We give thanks for the holy people who have gone before us, especially for Dee's sister Lynn and Pastor Matt's Aunt Phyllis. And we remember this week the Emmanuel Nine on the fifth anniversary of their deaths. Sustain us in your mission until the day you bear us up to join the saints in light. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with those who are gathered around you and be sure to extend that peace to all you meet this week. Merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration, but you make of them an abundance, just as you do with our lives. Until our great Paschal feast is resumed in person, sustain us with your word and strengthen us all for service in your name, in the might and mercy of the risen Christ. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 
I'd like to call your attention to a few things. Please read the emails that are coming from the church office. In them you will find important information about how you can help others during this time and a number to call in case you need help at home. Also contained in those emails are daily devotions and some upcoming information about what the council is discussing and thinking about concerning Pastor Chris's uh, resignation. So please check all of that information and read up on what is going on in your community of faith. For now, let us uh, continue our service and receive God's blessing. God sent his son into the world. Now that son is sending us. Christ fills our hearts with compassion. Give us the courage, O Lord, to offer comfort and strength to those who are hurting. Christ sets our sights on the people in need of his care. Send us out, O Lord, with eyes that can see opportunities for service. Go out into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Help the suffering. Honor all. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. With God's help, we will. The blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.